A uh, very good morning, respected uh, Dr. Anand Gokani, sir, Dr. Shah, our director principal, my dear students, and the uh, wonderful faculty members, and a very very warm welcome to all the audiences who are watching us live on Facebook. It is an it is a matter of absolute pride for us to have a session with Dr. Anand Gokani. I am absolutely in no capacity to introduce you, sir. But let me just take quick two minutes to tell the audience about you. Dr. Anand Gokani, sir, is a practicing diabetologist at Bombay Hospital. He uh, has been working with children of all age groups and uh, understanding that the root cause of stress, which is the precursor to diseases like diabetes, is uh, founded at a very early age. Because of which he started taking these motivational work. camps back in the year 1999 and from there on has been interacting with a lot of students uh, he is the great grandson of mahatma gandhi and truly believes that the policies for a healthy living like honesty and you know integrity essential for one's success so it is an honor and we are all looking forward to this session this platform is all yours thank you very much saganda and good morning to everybody here uh, this is a privilege which has been bestowed upon me and i'm not sure really how much i deserve all the words that you spoke about me but uh, sometimes the praise comes first and then you have to work to to deliver the goods so i'm going to endeavor to be as as fitting and as deserving of all your compliments um while i was waiting here and uh, looking up on all the all the sheets of all on all the pages the bright faces of the students of the 10th standard of elpro international i couldn't help but notice one thing that each one of you has got a brightness which is unique to yourself and this brightness is what is your personal characteristic and uh, often times when i give lectures i prepare things to think to to speak but um, when i'm faced with the audience the audience evokes uh, some things which i was never prepared for and today is not going to be any exception so if you feel some things really nice then you can imagine that it has been reflected from off your face to me and it's only me who is privileged to have put it into words but it's actually coming from you so whilst i watch all your faces and speak to you all i uh, uh, i definitely realize that i'm not sticking to any script uh one thought came to my mind i said uh, all of you presently sitting in this crisis period at home on your computer we have a very different kind of togetherness a togetherness which is very distant we are not next to each other to touch and feel each other but we are next to each other in spirit and um, uh every day day after day we hit this platform to learn something to work at something to share views and to move forward so it brings me to the next question <clears throat> why are we doing all this why do we have sessions like this why do we invite people to talk why do we study books why do we read why do we do anything and this answer has been plaguing so many for so many years and the answers are different at every time and for every person but there's one common word there's a purpose we have a purpose to be alive to be living to be here on this earth and i have noticed through all my reading and all the years of my own experience that a, a life without purpose is a life which has been wasted if you have come here to be like a leaf in autumn and just be blown around by the winds of change and not have any purpose in life when the time comes for reckoning you will find that there's no answer you can give so the first thing that has to happen with us is that we need to derive what is the purpose of our life and that purpose is become our passion you don't have to look very far you have to look within yourself in your own mind when you look in your own mind and you think what what gets me most excited like somebody would be most excited to uh, fit into the role of a doctor 
he love helping people who are unwell it's like a jigsaw puzzle you get all your symptoms from the patient you put more investigations you add two and two and make four and with that four you help that patient he becomes well and you feel fulfilled and so it becomes a jigsaw puzzle patient after patient and i dare say each jigsaw puzzle is not only a jigsaw puzzle but it's a full video it's a full movie because each patient is a is an episode by himself so many times i come home and i uh, tell my family that i have a very good time at work today and they are, they wonder how because everyone goes to work and comes back tired and i say i'm not tired the reason is that every patient of mine was like an episode of a serial and i enjoyed myself through and through the reason is that i followed the path of my passion because i wanted to be a doctor that answer came to me many years back and i worked towards it and i reached where i want likewise some of you might might want to become an aeronautical engineer someone may become as want to become an uh, uh, astronaut or someone may want to become a engineer someone may want to be a uh, a nurse or anything you may want to do anything but that passion within you will inform you it will be when you when you taste that water you will know this is the right water for me but how does one discover that he discovers that by broadening his outlook if you narrow yourself to routine only what is visible then you are like the uh, horse that draws the cart who's got blinkers on the side and only sees one thing and when he sees only one thing doesn't know what's happening anywhere around him i'm not talking about your visible eyes i'm talking about your mind your mind has to diversify so what if you're a commerce student doesn't mean you don't read science so what if you're a science student doesn't mean you don't read commerce or art or literature it doesn't mean that you don't paint or don't act in dramas doesn't mean that you don't travel do everything that is possible on earth put your finger in every pie experience everything while you are at this age because you might reserve all these activities for the age of past retirement say when i have holidays i'll do when i have time i'll do when i am retired i'll do and suddenly you find that time's gone for example simple thing i ask many children how am how 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 many of you have read the bhagavad gita we say we are hindu or we say we are christian we say we are islamic have we read our books have we understood our books they say no 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 we don't we go to temple we go to church we go to dargah we go to mosque or we go wherever but we don't read our books why is the old people okay this 75 year old man led his life haphazardly now he is sitting at home retired he decides to pick up pick up the bhagavad gita and he starts reading it and he starts when he reads the first chapter he understands that oh this was a fantastic idea reads the second chapter and says oh this was super and then he sits back and regrets he says i wish someone had told me this when i was 12 i would have implemented it and enjoyed the rest of my life so you will learn you get the key to your happiness when you are 75 when half your life or more than half your life is over and that that's the biggest folly that everyone makes is that they look they shy away from that which is beneficial and take only what is rubbish because that is served to you by the devil and made attractive with good attractive wrapping paper and you get drawn into it and then into the whirlpool of life and then when you get thrown out half dead that's the time when you pick up these books this is a picturesque example of what happens to everybody now when i go to read the bhagavad gita i also think i said did all this actually happen did was there one wise man who sat and wrote this whole book or were there many editions of it before it became solid i can't answer that question but i do answer one question i say i look at the cover and i see a chariot and on the chariot are two gentlemen do you remember which two gentlemen who was looked at the cover rahul uh, sir is it uh krishna and arjun yes absolutely so you look at the horses you look at the chariot 
you look at arjun so you look at krishna and uh, you say is it actually is it actually that message that is going through or is there a different message now you look at your own self your own being your own being has five senses we can smell we can see we can touch we can we can taste and we can hear i have a question and, no no questions afterwards so when we have five senses they are like the five horses that drive us to choose where we are going and when we uh, have the chariot is our body and arjun is the mind because he is the one who is pulling the horses in the right direction or what he feels is the right direction and is moving on and krishna is the one who knows the full program you are and saying upon instructing Damn, son. Where'd you find somebody's audio is on can uh sir if you could please unmute yourself uh sir if you could please unmute yourself i'm sorry <laughs> so what what i was saying is when when krishna instructs arjun and arjun executes it on the on the five horses and the carriage has a purposeful direction it goes to where it is supposed to go and does what it is supposed to do it gives me an insight into our human nature we all know that a human being is body mind and soul and the body is what we see the mind is all the electrical connections and the thinking ability but what the mind thinks and how it executes that thought is all governed by the soul and the soul is the thing that gives purpose to the mind and body and that conglomerate of body mind and soul is our human a human form so all you children are conglomerates of body mind and soul but you need to know how to listen to that voice of the soul which tells you the purpose of your life so the bottom line of this whole introduction is that you need to have a purpose driven life without purpose your life is wasted and to get that purpose driven life you need to do several things you need to have several attributes so we're going to examine these attributes because at your juncture had someone told me these attributes i don't know where i would have been but i discovered these attributes by and by when i read about things when i listen to people or when i experience and my experience teaches me to do better next time of course experience is the best teacher but it leaves you quite scarred and it leaves you with lots of uh, experience but sometimes inability to translate experience into action so then the the qualities that we need to look on when we are trying to have a purpose driven life is the first thing i'd say is discipline if you have discipline and what is discipline i thought a lot about what is discipline some people think discipline is being trapped in a cage and not being able to be free freedom is not discipline freedom comes with responsibility and the responsibility comes close to discipline and the in freedom discipline is imposed by yourself in imprisonment discipline is imposed by someone else and we want independence we want to be free we want to be uh, capable of making our own decisions then is very important that we do self discipline discipline is the bridge i like this sentence a lot and i want yeah. you to remember it discipline is the bridge between ambition and achievement are you sunna if you have an ambition main na and you want to achieve it so iske chemist children please keep yourself on mute i think somebody is unmuted and speaking in between i'm sorry for the intervention no 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 problem that's arshia arshia please mute yourselves okay i was saying that discipline is a bridge and that bridge is the bridge between ambition and achievement and we have all many ambitions we want to do this we want to do that we want to 
uh, be everywhere at the same time but if you want to reach achievement and you want to succeed in your ambitions then it's very important that you have a uh, discipline and discipline means to be able to work to a certain program and stick to it no matter what no matter what dis- what distractions you have and no matter what uh, uh, pulls you uh, away from your main purpose in life and this is the most important thing which has to be engendered at this age if not earlier so all the children in this group today make one disip- one one resolve that hence forward we have to be regulated by ourselves and to be regulated is not being not copying someone it's not like if you have, if you regulate yourself you have become a copy a, a carbon copy of your grown ups so don't cut your nose to spite your face by saying that if my grown ups are disciplined or if they are telling me to be disciplined i won't be disciplined just because i want to assert my opinion you can assert your opinion in so many different ways but discipline is something that is timeless is as old as the hills if those people who had discipline reach somewhere in life so there are many stories i can share with you on discipline but at present we'll just stick with this much remember that discipline is the bridge between ambition and achievement if you want to achieve your ambitions you must engender discipline the next thing is focus if you have discipline next thing you must have is focus and you when you when i say focus i again go back to mahabharat and if you remember dronacharya who was the who was the guru of all the kauravas and the and the pandavas he took them to a field and he was teaching them archery he asked duryodhan that uh, there is a bird in the tree i want you to shoot the red eye the eye of the bird is red i want to shoot your arrow at the red eye after some time he asked everyone duryodhan he asked duryodhan what do you see he say i see a field and in that field i see many trees he say in that one tree i see a bird and on that bird i see a red eye so okay bhim what do you see he said i see a tree i see a bird and i see a red eye he asked arjun what do you see arjun said i see a red eye he just said i see a red eye and then he said okay shoot and duryodhan's arrow went somewhere the beam's arrow went in the tree but missed the bird arjun's arrow hit home why because he had a task at hand and he focused on it ruthlessly and when he focused on it he only saw that and nothing else so if you employ that same philosophy in your life and when you have exam you only focus on exam when you have a project you only focus on project when you have a relationship only focus on relationship and give all these your 100% at a time i don't say you don't have time many programs but at a time you give what you are doing your 100% which means what you are doing now is listening to me give that 100% when you talk i give you 100% when someone else speaks i give that person 100% if we do that every moment in our life will be packed with meaning will be packed with experience and so focus becomes a very important thing and focus leads to a very important philosophy and which is to live in the here and now now you know that many people have a habit of worrying your parents may be worriers you may be worrier what does worry do you when do you worry you worry today and what do you worry about you worry about tomorrow so today you become a worrier about tomorrow what will happen in my exam what will happen in this project what will happen to my life you sit and worry what are you doing about today you are wasting today in worrying about tomorrow so today is gone today is wasted now tomorrow arrives tomorrow becomes today and when tomorrow becomes today you worry about tomorrow because that's your habit and tomorrow becomes today and today becomes yesterday and then you wring your hands and regret about yesterday that oh my god my future my past has been so miserable 
so 90% of humanity waste their life in regretting the past and worrying about tomorrow and wasting a perfectly good today and every today becomes a tomorrow every today becomes a tomorrow and every today also becomes a yesterday so if you want to lead your life and at at the age of 50 say that i have a very regrettable past and a very worrisome future the reason is because you never used today what if you used today forget about tomorrow it has not happened yet we don't know what will happen today if you give your best and your best is going to change every day you give your 100% best today you will get your 100% best result today and when you get your 100% best result today your past is going to be a happy one because every today which was well spent becomes a happy past and so you don't regret the past and when tomorrow becomes today you give it the best and when you give it the best your present is also happy and your future is also bright and that habit shifts you from living tomorrow or living yesterday live today and that means live in the here and now and when you live in the here and now today this second is your here and now where you are and what time it is is the here and now and in that here and now give it your best and give every here and now your best and you will have the best result in life so that is the derivative of focus so when you focus you give your here and now the best and this here and now makes your past and future bright so get that into your system give your here and now the best don't worry about tomorrow it not happen when it happens we'll deal with it have faith in yourself have faith that under any circumstance if you give your best you can get out of it and if you can't get out of it no one can get out of it because you have to have faith that i am unique and i am the best and the which you are but that best is shrouded with doubt and is shrouded with all the negative things possible so let there not be any of these envelopes that cover your inner glory and let it express so that's about focus now when you focus you say focus on what so we get to the crux which means have a goal which means at this juncture in your life having lived 15 16 years you have to plan what's the next 15 16 years going to be for you and in the next 15 16 years you have to establish many things you have to establish a profession you have to establish a family maybe you have to establish children you have to establish a home you have to live life you have to have a circle and there are so many things to be done how do we do that we set ourselves a goal what do i want to make out of myself i know you have one goal now to choose commerce science or arts and that goal is obsessing your mind i'm sure every one of you has already clarified that goal and know what you're going to do once you know what you're going to do concentrate on it and don't do because my friend to commerce i went to commerce because we can't be separated you will get new friends but follow your passion i had a friend who followed me to medicine today he is a dropout he couldn't manage it he came in with me because he says oh you are going to medicine i'll also go he got in but he couldn't get out and therefore it's very important that when it comes to major decisions you look only to yourself and gather friends on your journey but your journey should be well focused get your goal right so it important thing today in the next one month is that you should sit down and pen your thoughts write it in a diary sit by yourself and write a good solid goal or a mission statement what is my mission in life write it down and once you write a mission statement it will be very clear in your mind that this is how i see myself when i'm 25 i see myself in an office executive owning a business or see myself practicing medicine or i see myself on x y and z platform see yourself somewhere when you're 25 and then set that goal after that long term goal is set you set small long short term goals and every short term goal is a step towards the long term goal so get into the habit of setting goals that today i'll achieve this much tomorrow i'll achieve that much day after i'll achieve that much 
and at the end of the week i'll achieve that much and if i have achieved that much i'm that much closer to my goal so setting goals is the exercise which derives from having focus now you Sir. say short term yeah no questions just now we we'll do questions later um when you set goals you have to have a frame of time also and so we need to have time management if you have a frame of time that i do this much in this time like for example today you have to be at this class at 11 o'clock means at 11 everyone has accumulated and done it so like that if you have a frame of time then you make the best of your time it reminds me of radyard kipling's poem which ends with the last two lines if you fill each unforgiving minute with 60 seconds of distance run then and only then will you be a man my son this is advice to his son but in today's times this advice fits the daughter also and the son also that if you fill each unforgiving minute why does he say unforgiving minute because time is something that once gone will never come back your 10 standard once gone will never come back you can't say oh i wish i had a chance to do it again i wouldn't have played the fool if i had been told that the right time so if you want to play the fool remember you're like the grasshopper and not the ant the grasshopper fiddled when it was summer played music enjoyed itself when winter came had no food to eat the ant collected food in summer stacked up her ant hill and at the end of it in winter comfortably enjoyed food and security and happiness so if you have a program which you have to fulfill you must have time management and for time management there is a very simple exercise write a to do list every day once you set your goals you know what you have to do to get there so you make a to do list every day roll out of bed take a paper and sit down and say to do i have to you can start with say, uh, things like i have to brush my teeth i have to bathe i have to dress up i have to go to school i have to do this homework i have to telephone x y z i have to buy y a, a b c and make this entire list after making this list till you get into the habit you make a second step and the second step is divide the page into four in the top left hand corner you write urgent and important in the next side on the right hand corner on the top you write urgent but not important then next you write below you write not import not urgent but important and the last you write not urgent not important now take your to do list and divide it into all these four squares and now you are set for the day out of all these to do things see what you can delegate what you can ask someone else to do it who is equally competent to do it but has some more time than you and so you can use your time for something better once you've done that you've ticked those parts of your to do list and it's gone but the next thing is that you do you start with urgent and important finish that then urgent but not important finish that then important but not urgent finish that and then finally if you have time do also the not not urgent not important and if you do this correctly you'll have time for everything but if you don't do this correctly and waste time in the not urgent not important at the end of the day suddenly realize that urgent important was missed out and so you start wringing your hands in regret and then one day is gone the past is miserable the future is filled with worry and what you did today is only fiddle like a grasshopper so focus is very important time management is very important goal setting is very important we move on to other quality hard work once you get all this focus and time management everything then you have to work hard because you have to finish that to do list that to do list can be very long but come what may you have to finish it and if you do it properly with full focus with full concentration with full here and now you can do it but at the end of the day you sleep like a log because you know you're a fulfilled person you have done what you set out to do otherwise you sleep uneasy i haven't finished studying this chapter i haven't finished that book i haven't done my homework why because i went down to play my friends were calling me these are the devils calling you out of turn if you have set it as a time to play and go to play that's a different matter but 
if you succumb because someone tells you to do something and you don't is not in your program then the devil is calling you and therefore it's very important that you have a uh, hard work as the frame to achieve all these things i'm going to give you a small story of hard work i know some of you who make made my camp they may have heard this story but pa- pardon my repeating i know sometimes repeat the same story learn different things so i'm going to tell you this story and this story starts off as a, a small village it's in a small village surrounded by hills which is like the places around pune and very beautiful place and every every weekend all the young people would climb the hills go to the top have a picnic and come down so it became a touristic spot and therefore the elders of the village decided that this hill is so good and it attracts so many people why not we build a temple up there so all the young people gathered and went up with their instruments and they cut the top of the hill made a plateau and from the stones that they cut they built a temple so the same stones were built were, were used to build the platform the walls the roof and from one of the stones they built the deity and they put the deity and this became a pilgrimage spot now all the villages in the neighborhood plus all the far flung places people started coming and visiting this place so every festival was with pomp and splendor and every every uh, weekend was fun so the popularity of that place increased now on one very festive day thousands of people went up the hill including one old man and they celebrated upstairs did what or whatever they wanted to do at the end of the day the old man was very tired and he decided that i'll spend the night on the in the temple i'll go down in the morning the entire hill top was vacated and only only one man remained and when he was sleeping he heard voices somewhere around 2 o'clock in the night he was sleeping and suddenly he woke up hearing voices and the voices were fighting with each other he says what do you think of yourself why are you so uh, uh, why are you so insulting to me so you don't know i work harder than you work and the other one voice is saying i work harder you don't understand when people come and trample all over me how much it hurts my body and the other one says you don't know anything they trample only on weekends for me i have to carry the weight of this temple the whole the whole week and the other one says you don't understand anything i save you from the dust and the storms and the wind and everything and you guys are sitting so comfortably under me and after some time he realized that he is talking these are the these are the conversation between the stones of the temple talking to each other if it were ever possible the walls were talking to the roof and the roof was cursing the floor and the floor was cursing the walls and they were all fighting amongst themselves and all of a sudden all of them turned to the deity and says hey what the hell are you thinking so much about yourself do you remember we used to sit together we were right next to each other in the so many years ago and now people come and wash you with milk and rose water and uh, put flowers and incense sticks and fruit for you and pray to you and you are no different from us and so they kept saying this to the deity and the deity was uh, listening quietly after all the hue and cry died down the deity spoke again the first time and the deity said you remember several years ago we were all in the same boat we were all rock at the top of the mountain and after some time these people came and they started cutting us you remember when the axes fell on us how much it hurt and when it hurt you resisted and he pointed to the floor and he said you resisted you didn't let the axes shape you so they mentioned they said that oh this stone is so hard let's use it as a foundation and the floor and then you resisted and you when you when they made you into plates you said uh, you didn't let them break you any more they said this stone is so strong let's make it into the wall and you were light and you were made into the roof but when they were hitting on me i kept quiet and they kept hitting and they said wow this one every time we hit something chips off and they kept hitting and hitting and hitting relentlessly and ruthlessly and finally they made me into this statue do you know how much pain i must have gone through and do you know how much i suffered in those days and because of that suffering today the whole world comes and prays to me the whole world gives me bath with milk and rose water and you guys are washed with all the effluent water 
and this went on and the old man listened to the story and when this story is heard by 10 standard students what are they supposed to understand that in the 6th standard all the students are the same you come from different houses you all live together all have the same intelligence all have the same carefree happy abundant life and as you grow harder you have to work and then come all these guys with their instruments and their axes and mashes and drills these are your teachers your parents your neighbors your friends and all these people who start hammering at you and you resist it you say no i won't do this i won't do that i won't allow you so what do you become then you become the floor of the temple you become the wall of the temple you become the roof of the temple but that student which says you ask me to do this difficult job i'll do my best i'll do it and i'll come back tomorrow you give me more difficult job i'll do that also and you keep doing keep getting beaten keep getting hammered and keep getting chiseled and finally one point in time you get crowned into a deity and then for the whole life everyone prays to you you see this example how it applies in your daily day, day to day life this example is showing you a reason why your teachers yell at you why your teachers are trying to discipline you not because they hate you is because they want something to be made out of you they are the sculptors and you are the sculpted only thing is you resist you will be at the base of the triangle in life life is a triangle we all are sitting at the base in your childhood then as you move ahead the space is less and few get eliminated you move further up the space is even less more get eliminated and finally at the apex only one person stands and that one person is a winner there is a winner in all of you but you have to discover that winner and that winner won't be gifted to you and that faith you have to have that there is a winner inside me i am not competing with my world i am competing with myself i have to be better than yesterday if you are better than yesterday you are a winner if you are not you are stuck so hard work is very important now when you do hard work you need to learn how to prioritize you need to know your priorities how to make things uh, all things matter now if you learn how to prioritize you got to know in which compartment what comes so that is a huge chapter which you need to discover yourself but i'll tell you that the most important things in your life are your family your siblings your friends the real friends who you can give your life for your health and your passions and therefore if you have these five things written in your book my family my parents my friends my health my passion if you have these five things written and you see what it takes to maintain these in top notch order maintain your health maintain your friends maintain your passions maintain your uh, uh, family give them your best time after that comes the next important things and the next important things are which car you own which business you are in which uh, house you live in which uh, jewelry you bought and how much is your bank balance i don't say don't look at these things but look at these things not as important as the other five things so work on these things also after having worked on the other things and finally comes the lesser important things but the joyous things which movie you saw which drama you went to which place you travel to and a host of other things which you do for your entertainment now if you put all these into different priority sections and you did the most important things first and then the next and the next there is time for everything but suppose you spent the whole day in just doing seeing movies sat in front of netflix and saw movies the whole day and neglected your health neglected your family neglected your passion and days go by and soon you find there's no room for all those important things only the unimportant things took your took a time away and therefore it's very important for you to learn how to prioritize and that again is a urgent important chapter which i told you prioritizing is putting into different classes and that's a very important factor when you work hard because if you work hard in the wrong direction you will never reach your destination you must work hard and have your goal and put the effort in the right direction 
now when you do all this the last quality you need and that is honesty you know honesty is a very uh, misunderstood thing you can be one of three types of people you be honest despite the whole world or you say i'll be honest but forget about the others if they want to be they can be or you can be everybody is doing it so why not i also do it if i don't do it i'll be out of the race now this attitude is what will govern where you will reach in life and how much self esteem you will have how much self respect you will have if you make a decision at this age 10th standard that come what may i will be honest and i will not succumb to anything i'll have to fight i'll lay my life down but i'll be honest then you made yourself a very strong foundation to live a very good life a life where you can raise your head and meet anyone eye to eye and not hang your head in shame for any reason i told the batch yesterday about two words reputation and character reputation is what you are when the lights are on when everybody is looking and character is what you are when the lights are off when no one is looking except yourself and god belief in god is very important but yourself is there in front of you if you do something wrong you know very well that it's wrong even if no one else has seen you it's very important for you to align character and reputation as exactly the same what your reputation is so will your character be if your character is different than your reputation different sooner or later the reputation will catch up with the character and you will be exposed look in literature look in newspaper and you will find abundant examples of such cases who appeared to be wealthy rich and very big philanthropist after some years found to be involved in scams and those scams when they came to light he was reduced to zero great people have fallen and hit hard and therefore it's become very important to have that policy in life honesty honesty is the best policy was a coined proverb which not for no reason and therefore honesty becomes a very important attribute for a good human being maintain it come what may and you will stand out you will stand out different from other people who are run of the mill because an honest person shines in his own light other people shine in reflected light so you decide you want to be a candle and have your own light or you want to be a mirror and reflect light and if you reflect light in the darkness you got nothing only when light comes on you are something so a candle is never dark because it's lit it works so you decide these are important attributes for a purpose driven life last message is at your age try everything try everything good bad ugly but no which compartment it comes in after trying evaluate and accept what is good and keep at it and reject what is bad and chuck it because experience is a very important thing to gather your your parents have experience your teachers have experience they don't want you to suffer so they guide you along the line the wise is one who learns from others experience the dumb is the one who learns by his own experience life is too short to gather all experiences so take some experience for free and move on that's why it's important to listen to your children, parents and teachers because parents and teachers are experienced they have suffered they may not tell you but they have suffered and that's why they tell you what not to do suffer different things what they have not suffered but learn from what they suffered it will save you a lot of time and energy otherwise they will start from zero and reach 50 you will start from zero and reach 50 your children will start from zero and reach 50 no one will grow progress beyond 50 but if you start from 50 then you got a chance to reach 100 200 300 and so on and therefore decide for yourself what you want you want to be exactly same as what they are or you want to start from where they leave and make your path higher than theirs no parent ever feels unhappy if his child is gone ahead of him in fact he gets filled with pride the day his child looks more superior because then he has been a good parent he or she has been a good parent or he or she has been a good teacher only when the child exceeds their expectations and their own stature 
so with these few words i think i have crammed into your fertile minds lots of seeds so that they may grow into plants after some years you will have to water those plants i put the seeds i hope the seeds will be big trees at some point in time and i'm hope i'm around to see those trees and enjoy that fruit so now i can uh, invite questions from those who want to ask and uh, i'd like to thank you all for such bright listening in spite of being a long lecture you guys have been happily nodding and uh, accepting whatever i said so uh, i hope it all helps you and i'm very happy to answer some questions so go right ahead and ask yuvraj you are most restless so you want to ask first yuvraj chauhan say what you are thinking i can see i can see the teleprint teleprinter on your mind the print out is very... literally did not i did not even got to know like when i just passed away i was like 15 minutes yes we got 45 minutes more so i will continue and then i said i saw at the watch and it's one hour the wow that's great i'm happy for you but now you have some comments or questions what i do all the students your explanation was perfect so i do not have any okay you know there's a hands on zoom and uh, we'll take your questions okay yes sir please go ahead you were saying something no i was saying that when when at the end of a lecture there are no questions either everyone understood everything or nobody understood a word of it so <laughs> it could <laughs> be no, both sir, ways shayon do you have a question you raised your hand uh yes i did feel nervous in the first but uh i may go ahead with my question so so yeah. i also asked you this or asked a specific african sanyasi in the camp last time uh, shayan little you... louder raja it's uh, your voice is your your very far from your mic i think uh my mic is right here okay so yeah it's better so last time when i was in the camp i asked a specific african sanyasi a uh, person what do you do when all the doors get closed around you so yeah. i would like to uh, orient the same question to you to hear what you have your thoughts on it just ask the question again uh, what do you do when you feel like all the doors around her around you are closing when you feel all the doors around you are closing look back you will find some door open because not all doors never shut the wrong doors shut and the right doors open and many times you realize that you are so concentrated on the doors that are shut and keep on knocking on them that you miss the opportunity of the doors which are open so i found many times that all my delays and all my disasters were actually designed to give me something better i'll give you one story many years ago i used to go in 1997 to 99 i used to go to calcutta every month and every month i would go on friday morning and return on saturday night and saturday night the flight was at 8:30 so after some time i became careless i used to receive the ticket and just put it in my bag and never look at the time because i knew every year every month it's the same time then one one visit i got the ticket but i didn't get i didn't check it and when i went to the airport when i went in to check in she says your flight already left it's on the runway i said how can it be she said look at the time it's 7:30 and i had, i thought it was 8:30 all the time so i said oh my god now how will i go because i have to get back to bombay tomorrow i have a meeting even though it's sunday and i have to go for rounds i said i have to reach so she said i'm sorry this flight's gone you can't you can't do it so i asked i said what can i do then to to get to bombay so she says i can help you check what flights left and so they went and they uh, they looked around and they said okay there is an air india flight which leaves in the next half an hour but there's only one first class ticket in that now a first class ticket all of you know is the most expensive thing my my ticket used to be sponsored at 2500 rupees bombay to calcutta and calcutta to bombay one way so 5000 rupees the first class ticket one way was 9500 rupees 
but i had that day i had worked very hard and i had seen many patients and i had collected my fees and my fees had amounted to 9800 rupees and when i saw that ticket and i said this is my only way i can get back to bombay i took out all that money from my pocket and i bought that first class ticket i regretted it so much i said my whole week has gone waste two days of hard work has gone because of my carelessness i didn't see the 730 ticket and i should have just come an hour earlier and taken that flight and gone back i missed it so i get punished for my carelessness i bought that ticket and i said okay i'm going to be traveling first class for the first time and last time in my life let me enjoy it so when i went there that when i went and sat down i realized that i can have another passenger sit next to me the seats are so big and i was i relaxed myself i pulled my feet up removed my shoes removed my socks made made myself comfortable i was grimy sweaty and very tired the lady came with a wet towel i took it i took two of them i wiped my face relaxed i started speaking to the guy next to me who was in a full suit and we got into conversation and uh, in my conversation i realized that he is the human resource director of a very big multinational company and we got talking and he asked me what do i did in calcutta and i said well i go to calcutta to give a seminar on stress management and i treat patients for diabetes so he says oh you do stress management seminars my company needs it in my company i have been looking to see someone so i said this is the capsule i offer and they say okay you're done and i got a contract of three seminars for 25000 each in the next one month and i got 75000 bucks and i said to myself i said that missed flight was providential i made god said you worked hard i'm giving you a missed flight you will see the missed flight but i'm giving you a passenger next to you who is going to give you everything that you want but you have to notice it but then if i had been a snob like most children are nowadays and sat in the seat take out my cell phone and start fiddling with it and not talk with him that opportunity would have gone and i would have reached bombay with zero conversation not no not learned anything not benefited anything he would have gone his way i would have gone my way i would have been the loser and ever since that day i realized that every person who sits next to you every person who crosses your path every person you encounter is god's coincidence to make you get better but we don't use it we sit with our cell phones and fiddle with the past and the future without knowing what's happening next door if you keep your minds open your doors are opening all the time all the time they're opening walk through them whichever door opens walk through you will realize that your destiny is taking you where you actually belong but we resist because our mind is the monkey just imagine if arjun decide to do do where he wants to go and he doesn't listen to krishna and he takes the horses anywhere then they wouldn't have won the war and what if arjun also decide to sleep and only the body went and the horses went the horses are five senses where what if the taste took it somewhere else and the hearing took it somewhere else and the cart would have gone in five different directions so our body is just like that we are keep on following our senses we don't follow our senses we control our senses and our senses are controlled by our mind and our mind is controlled by our soul and let soul be the driver all the time so my dear shayan you have your answer i hope that uh, yes doors sir closed, don't look at Thank that you. door look next door thank you sir don't do that in your real house okay sir we have a question from palak from palak okay where is palak palak okay, your question uh, sir network issues so i can't turn on my video okay i just see your name palak karnavat yes sir go ahead palak sir i want to ask you that basically to achieve something somewhere we need a lot of patience and hard work as well so basically sometimes we keep on waiting to achieve something but then we don't know when something passes and we have an opportunity next door so i just wanted to know that how much exactly to wait to achieve something like you don't have to wait to have you have to only work and your work will bear fruit now whether fruit will come today tomorrow day after we don't know and for that you have to have three p's patience perseverance and persistence 
patience is something that you say okay the fruit will come one day and then put it aside you don't have to develop it don't just don't yearn for the fruit before planting the seed and persevere sometimes obstacles will come your way which says that no you can't do you trip you up the road is rough potholes are there climate is bad all will happen persevere and persist persist means don't let go sink your teeth into something don't let go then you reach the goal you want to reach but then the fruit is so sweet that you sit back enjoy the shade and the fruit and life is very cushy so three p's you need to be when you are in your situation of uh, uh, when will i get the fruit that when nobody knows that only will happen when it happens but set your goal and walk towards it you will reach stop looking at that enjoy the view on the way also so enjoy the process more as much as the goal thank you sir we have a question from angel angel bhati yes angel so i as a person am a very indecisive person and i am interested in a lot of things so how do i decide or on what basis do i direct okay, my name, focus to one thing okay name all the lot of things <laughs> say all what you interested I, in i am interested in sports i am interested in which journalism sport? which sport lawn tennis okay then i am interested in journalism i am yeah. interested in being a doctor yeah. so these are a few of those things so how do okay. i decide or how do i direct my you, focus to one thing you divide your day into two parts or three parts and you put one hour of lawn tennis every day so you got your lawn tennis you set yourself a target that i want to become maharashtra state champion if you want or i'll become el pro champion if you want or you become pune champion if you want or club champion but set yourself a target achievable and then play tennis to reach that target otherwise your tennis will be knocking a ball across which is actually a waste of time it's not a waste of time you get some mental peace and all that but it's a it's a waste of time ask me in my mind it's a waste of time because you could use that time better then you want medicine and journalism you see which one is more passionate if you are passionate about both become a medical journalist you can train in journalism and medicine you get into medical college start training in journalism on the side learn everything there is about journalism on your own because nothing prevent you from growing you don't have to get a board certification you become medical journalist you can do so much today malpractice cases are need medical journalism now this whole covid flu the you see what is written by the people the journalists who they are all common journalists they are not medical journalists there are thousand mistakes written inside they don't know sometime spelling of vaccine also so if you have trained in medicine and become a writer then it's a very different thing you are a very empowered person so you can do both these things you can treat one as a hobby one as a vocation and one as your passion so you want to do medicine get into medicine while you are doing medicine you might get attracted to doing surgery then you say okay i pursue surgery when you are in surgery you get attracted to doing heart surgery and you feel there's a need of the day okay go in for heart surgery side by side you write articles there are issues a medical person goes through there are issues which a medical person who is senior can guide a younger person you write articles contribute to medical journals medical articles to newspapers if you see times of india there will be at least one column written by a doctor who tells about the doctor's perspective about life sometimes they are good articles sometimes they are just essays which are written like a school child some some school children also write very well but the point is that you can do all the things you want to do write them on paper and then i told you write urgent important this that and prioritize which is your most which is which drives you the most and if medicine becomes a vocation you have made for good today everyone talks of depression in economics you know covid people lost their jobs no business no work they say oh there is a lot of recession i say there no recession for me for me i need a table chair if i don't have that also standing also i can do my do my trade a person ask me about their health i give them advice they pay me fees if they can't pay me fee i says okay no problem i can still give 
and sometimes they give me half the fee sometimes they give full fee sometimes they give much more than i deserve sometimes they say you pay whatever you want and they land up giving me something i could never dream of so my my wagon moves in all speed same speed in every climate there are some wagons which race in good climate and are conked out in bad climate you choose a wagon that can move in any climate law chartered accountancy engineering and uh, and uh, and medicine these are for timeless professions timeless means you don't need any infrastructure you can practice it standing in the middle of the road if you are doing intra infrastructure related things then you are dependent on so many things without that you are lost so get yourself a vocation where if you are starving you need to find do something and you will never starve if you are god forbid ever thrown into the world alone you should be able to stand on your feet and your education is for that then you follow your passion if your passion is journalism above medicine then do mbbs up to mbbs then take medical journalism write books or write articles or become an activist or become a medical lawyer if law law uh, attracts you you can represent people general public where they have been exceeded upon and like that there are so many ideas so don't let any passion die if you have 10 interests take part in all 10 interests but give it budgeted time some things you want to do on weekends see on weekends only so you got time for everything if you have if you give time for everything yep so i see a lot of versatility in you you will reach very far and like all your friends and when you reach far no take your friends along make them also reach far okay you got your answer yes sir thank you thanks angel so we have a Oops. question from ashwin yeah. ashwin yes sir sir you mentioned that we should live for today and not worry about tomorrow uh, yes. can you please explain the difference between worrying about the future and like planning for the future the planning for the future is an activity done today so you are still in today only planning for a future is an activity worrying about a future is not an activity is a waste of time worrying is planning without focus so you are not planning then planning is a very systematic word and worrying is a randomized word so if you have a project coming up then today's activity is planning for the project tomorrow's activity is executing the project and when the project becomes a success it will only be a success when you planned well today so planning and planning and procrastinating are two completely different things if you worry you are procrastinating by not doing the planning so it's important for you to plan as an activity and not worry worry is a helpless thing worry is when you wring your hands and uh, hope that someone outside will provide you with all the answers but planning is a proper activity and that activity is when you are doing that activity give it your best that is the here and now okay yes sir thank you sir welcome that was ashwin yes ashwin sir. that was you who asked the question right who asked yes sir yeah yes, okay sir. who's next anavi we have a question from anavi um yes sir so my question is related to ashwin's hmm. so uh, so you said that we have to create a goal and we should know where we want to be in 25 years and the path maybe, and maybe maybe 5 years also maybe, maybe i mean a, a long term goal would do yeah. but uh, the the path and mapping out the road to reaching that goal is also very important but so yes. when we do the planning uh, we also realize that there are some circumstances that have to be considered and some inevitable circumstances which we the, cannot they are the cannot. contributing or obstacles to your planning yeah yeah so these so obstacles we, and um, so, so you have to some, go over them or under them or around um, them yeah and what i was saying is that in the entire process of planning that is when the anxiety and the apprehension comes in and that's when we realize that we're stuck and i think that's where uh, an obstruction comes to your planning so so what yeah. do we do in that case you see if you deal with the here and now no you're not worried about the result 
suppose you're building a brick you know uh, there's a very beautiful video i'd recommend you to see is will you know will smith will smith is an actor in hollywood and he is also a motivational speaker i'll tell you one story will smith was about 8 years old and his brother was about 10 i think or the other way around these two young boys you imagine black community living in a crowded area their father had a plot of land and that plot of land had a very brick wall around and he father one day just called the bulldozer and bulldozed the whole wall bought a new set of bricks and told will and his brother now you build the build brick wall and for these little boys 11 and 8 years old young boys the brick wall is such a huge project because they are so small the project is so huge and they kept sitting they said how oh, father asked us to do such a big thing we can't do it how to do it then will says i started i put one brick and i placed it as best as i could and i showed my brother and i said see this brick is now perfectly straight then i put cement on it then i laid the next brick i put that brick as best in line with the first brick and like this i taught my brother and we both sat and we put each brick one brick at a time as best as i could and after some time they suddenly realized that the wall was complete and all he did was he didn't say oh i have to build a wall he said i have to place each brick as best as i can and he placed each brick as best as he can and to the next and to the next and to the next and like that he finished the wall and when the wall was built his father said fantastic better than any mason could have done because the mason's end product is my wall kitna jaldi how fast can i finish it so when you set yourself a goal then don't look at the goal then you make your everyday pro- program to reach the goal but don't keep staring at the goal if you stare at the goal then you'll be impatient to reach you say i have to take one step towards the goal give that one step the best and the next and the next and if you set yourself a timeline every step will be placed beautifully in your given timeline and that timeline will end and you will find yourself standing on the summit and say achieved goal then new goal then achieved goal then new goal then achieved goal and that's a life which is well lived got it one brick at a time not more got it you do very well okay who's next so we have arushi yes arushi here are you yes sir so so uh, people say that nature has all answers so do you yourself give an example that uh, leaf you don't want to be an autumn leaf that gets blown away by the wind yeah so like if in life like osiris alt horace if in life you had to follow the nature or like the lesson of one animal to achieve what you want to achieve in your life sir what would be the best animal to idealize or follow like the, the human fierce, being uh, <laughs> the human being is the best animal no no sir i think I she means follow. spirit animals like something hmm? like that means animal animal yes <laughs> less so no, primitive human nature mammals. is very versatile like See, every human is every different. animal can... human beings also animals only because we have been endowed with primitive some... primitive <laughs> there is no primitive animal that you can follow in one person one animal you can take one quality from every animal you take you take strength from the elephant you take uh, i give a story of ganpati we worship ganpati you say ganpati is half human half half elephant how it happened there is a long story behind it it's a story for children to accept then they say oh, it's not possible to transplant a elephant's head on a human being and see him survive so uh, then you ask the question so why was ganpati created and no one has ever asked that question why was he created is he is a god we worship him they make so much you and cry all over the country when ganpati festival comes they pray to it and they do all kinds of funny things but have you ever thought what is ganpati symbolically ganpati is fat stomach big big ears elephant ears such a long trunk and what is what is the trunk represent the nose right 
the trunk is the nose right yeah. so you got a long trunk you got big eyes you got big ears you got a fat stomach and all this and they say the vehicle of the monkey of the elephant is what hey, of the ganpati is what what is his vehicle a mouse a mouse a mouse is his vehicle yeah. how can a mouse carry such a big elephant Uh, such a such a big creature i can't say elephant so half elephant half human can't carry so you look at the essence of the story then you get your answer that is an arushi right yes sir arushi so answer is that ganpati fat stomach it indicates a huge size which should be your wisdom your wisdom should be a huge size and in order to get to that fat stomach you need to eat more you need to you need and what is to be eaten what you hear is what you put in what you smell is what you put in what you see is what you put in that's why ganpati has such a long nose he sticks his nose everywhere and gets things got such big ears so he listens everything and gets it in and he's got such big eyes he sees everything and gets it in and all this goes in to make his wisdom big and as you know wisdom doesn't weigh you can't weigh wisdom and to show that it shows that wisdom carried can be carried even by the lowly mouse and that's why ganpati's vehicle is a mouse weigh wisdom doesn't weigh but wisdom is huge and today ganpati is symbolic of what each one of us to do keep our eyes open keep our ears open keep your nose open sniff around smell around see around hear around get everything into ourselves expand our wisdom bank and that wisdom bank sees you through life that's my interpretation of ganpati so you ask me which animal to follow i say take one thing from every animal even take cunning from the fox because sometimes in life you need that also take loyalty from the dog Take love from the dog. The dog has only two genes: love and loyalty. You kick it also; it will still give you love. So, take these things from all animals and make yourself a unique animal. Did you get an answer? Yes, sir. Thank you. Sir. Or not quite? You sir, wanted another answer. No, sir. Maybe Arushi, you got a better answer. Tell me. so it was based on a story that my like grandfather used to tell me when i was little and mm-hmm. i like just found out about a year ago that it's actually related to egyptian mythology mm-hmm. so like there's this king who's about to give his son the throne like osiris he asks his son if you could follow one animal mm-hmm. the uh, like for your life as a king who would you follow so he gives options like a lion who's study fierce the fiercest leader that there is or the leopard that runs the farthest mm. that runs the fastest or the horse that is the steadiest runner or you like yeah they like idolize the owl that is the smartest so like yeah. horus gives sort of like the same answer <laughs> that's why so I what did, so which animal did the prince choose yeah he chose the horse the because horse. it yeah because horse is the one who leads a king into the war he runs no. the steadiest and the farthest but like the he king controls the, the horse the king yeah. must know how to control the horse yes that's what he said because yes. but like he put the brain above all so like yeah. that's why so that was what a king should do So that's yes. why I asked the question: What a human being should do, like a normal human being, because there are no each normal king, human being is a king and, and a queen. Are... Arushi, you are also a queen, not a not any less. So when you aim, you aim to the top. Don't don't think that you are not something that you are potentially waiting to become. If you work hard, you'll become. You'll be the first of the kind. But. don't set yourself low aims you know they say failure is not crime but low aim is a crime you give yourself tall aims you may fail failure is even in thomas edison failed more than 1000 time before his light bulb was invented so don't be afraid of failure but he was patient persistent and persevering then he got light bulb 
and today we take the light bulb for granted without that life is nothing so you also have it in you all of us all of you have it i also have it we have to implement it we have to find it first it's there just uncover it and let it let it grow yep yes sir who's got more thank question you. thank you sir i think that was a very well uh, made point i quite agree to what you said about taking a little bit from everywhere i think in life we most of the times kind of make it black and white not yeah. that no. both the colors add beauty You're very true thank you sir we have the next question from ishan where is ishan afternoon sir hi ishan yeah yeah Good hi ishan sir Hello, sir. Uh, yeah. So, like, my question is: Does making a plan B breach doubts for your plan A? So, like, plan B only cowards make. Right. If your plan A has to be plan A only, your one to ten oh. should be plan A. Plan B is a uh, escape route, which which yeah. deters you from plan B. Plan, uh, because plan like, B is I had, uh, because I had heard from like many celebrities, like everyone has a different opinion. So like Muhammad Ali always suggested having a plan B. Then there was his plan B. I'll tell you what Muhammad Ali's plan B was to execute plan A. All oh, right, nice. Mm. Muhammad Ali never accepted defeat. Yeah. And uh, Muhammad Ali was one of the greatest human beings in the boxing ring, not just yeah. boxer. So as a character, also he was a fine man. Yeah, he, he helped. Learned, uh, like he uh, w- worked a lot for like uh, defeating racism and. Uh, yep, he and, he worked a lot after his boxing career also. Yeah, and he never had even one black mark on his boxing on his career or on his character. He was very firm in what he did, hmm. and that's that's a quality we all must keep in mind. And we've gone through it already. If you made all your points, sit down. If I were you, I sit for the whole of tomorrow and today, and sit and assimilate everything that you heard, mm-hmm. and then reject what you don't like, mm-hmm. because you don't have to follow what I'm saying. I can tell you some things, but you may have some better ideas. But evaluate and reject. If you reject without evaluation, it's prejudice. Means pre-judgment. Don't pre-judge anything. First taste, examine, evaluate, and after that decide whether it's useful to you or not. but um, uh, plan a is plan a and plan b is to execute plan a there are okay. no plan b's for successful people or mm-hmm. plan b in plan c is for those who are cowards who say okay don't get movie ticket we'll go for dinner and if we don't get dinner we'll go to we'll eat on the stall in on the road that means they'll never get movie ticket but if you decide i want to see movie then you don't get it in the box office window you ask for the manager you tell the manager listen i have left my studies and come to see movie today i have to see this movie i want to see this movie or wait outside and do by sam dam dand bhed you find your ticket and go that's your plan a nothing should deter you okay. after all that of course sometimes you do meet with fear you can say that okay once in a while my plan failed but if you have plan b and plan c plan a will 100% fail mm mm-hmm. because your grit has got a cushion is going to fall on if your grit has no cushion to fall on the back door is locked and your only way out is to conquer the army and get out of the front door then you, you will fight tooth and nail right yeah mm-hmm. so you don't keep any back doors ajar don't burn your bridges as they say yeah that's can i have another question is yeah, being sure, a sure. perfectionist is being a perfectionist more important than being a winner like giving See, your if you are if you are a winner on the way you have become a perfectionist but a perfectionist by definition is an obsessive person who never reaches perfection perfection is a evolving term is not a fixed destination right today whatever you do is perfect to your best of your ability but it could have been better by your standard you could have been better better uh, represented in today uh, but whatever you did was the best and that's why it was perfect tomorrow your perfection may be even better than that day after it may be even better than that but a perfectionist is one who compares every day's performance with some theoretical perfection which will never happen 
and therefore a perfectionist is eternally unhappy because they have never reached that level of perfection though their expectations are there so if you do something as well as you can that's perfect enough and that's why you do you be you concentrate on being a winner you'll be a perfectionist that kind of perfection evolving perfectionist and so like uh, it's a sub question like so is being winner uh, like like better than the person who is front of you or is better than the per- like you. the uh, in front of you see if if you take a traditional competition 100 meters race for full 10 standard coming first is called a winner right but there will be one guy who trains every day he is coming first in 12 seconds and you don't train at all but you participated and you finished in 15 seconds one year back you did the same race in 18 seconds you are a winner because you like have conquered you the race compete, by 3 seconds you compete with yourself not with anyone or existing in society you compete with others but in essence you compete with yourself right mm-hmm. and if you have got better than yesterday you are better than you are a winner and all of us are winners mm-hmm. you know there is a there is a biological an example for being a winner all the kids every human being is a winner you know how it's a when when uh, you were conceived 60 million multiplied by 5 ml 60 million multiplied by 5 whatever that number may be that many sperms were released to go for one egg and every sperm swam for its life okay. and the one sperm that reached was the winner and that sperm became you right so in a sense every human being is a winner he competed with those which never became you know go to look at it that way if you go to biology basics every human being is a winner if it was some other one you wouldn't have been you you would have been someone else so when you when you take that into mind you say i'm competing with myself only whatever i do better today i'm a winner you may not compare with someone else who's maybe got 5 years more experience or you spend 6 months training it's like you have to think i have to give my best as whatever best i can and that's it that's a, for a marathon is a very good example of that everyone doesn't why to come first they all run together but everyone is worrying my last year's time was 4 hours this year my timing was 3 hours and 57 minutes i am feel so proud of it but they are far from the guy who came first because the guy who came first is a professional runner he comes from ethiopia he ran only that race his whole life was dedicated to that this guy is a, a, a chartered accountant who runs the marathon and so for him his improvement in his time only is big good enough so like that you race with yourself let every day see you better than yesterday mm-hmm. then you reach somewhere imagine in 100 days if you become 100% better by 1% improvement every day find like that areas in your life where you are weak and go exercise that muscle make it strong and before you know it you will be a fantastic human being you'll be everywhere all over the place thank you sir okay you. who's next shayan bhattacharya wants to ask something sir we have rahul pataskar yes Where are you, Rahul? Sir, uh, this is Rahul. Uh, sir, how to have long-term self-discipline? Like today, if I think about my future, further things I will do in my future, I feel energized. But then, as Rahul, time passes, Rahul, I feel that video. I'm not much serious about. It. Yeah, one second. You're not. Ah, uh, yeah, we are. Okay, yeah. say it I, again. Uh, sir, uh, like how to have long discipline? Like. today if i uh, think about my further things i will my future i feel energized but as yeah. time passes i feel that uh, i am not much serious about it so how to have the de- dedication you feel you are not very serious about it yeah is that what you said yeah means you have like a long term goal most of the time you, no because you are not balancing your life you can't be obsessed with only one goal all the time anyone will get tired If I practice medicine, I enjoy it. But after eight hours, nine hours, ten hours, twelve hours, if I have to continue to stay in the hospital, I start getting fed up. 
and then the guy who, if i have to stay a whole night next day i don't want to see a single patient the patient irritates me that doesn't mean i got fed up of the profession it means i overdid it which means you have to balance between all the things that you like what you are doing is focusing on one thing and that one focus is uh, is uh, uh, not allowing you to unwind to go back to that again then you get tired so it's very important that you um, uh, uh, take five six items and budget your time such that you got a variation in your uh, skill set so you need to be able to take uh, let's say six hours of studies or six hours of school and then two hours of homework then one hour of sport or two hours of sport then uh, half an hour of uh, uh, half an hour multiplied by three into meals and then half an hour of television then sleep for eight hours and next day you're back to uh, getting whatever you want so get um, uh, a variety of things into your program so you never get stale with one thing sir how, how, how to give 100 100% in what we are doing in the present how to give 100% to what you are doing in the present no i didn't understand the question how to give 100% to do what you are doing the best means i give example rahul your connection not good hello we come back to you we yeah. now okay. move to atharva's question atharva yeah. ask your question where is atharva yeah uh, sir so yes yes atharva hi uh you said that you should make various goals in life and then you achieve that goal like you know mm. you make one goal you work towards it and you only focus on that one thing you're doing but isn't that like tunnel visioning and isn't that like no. bad in no, a way no, no. you don't negative? tunnel vision you you set a goal and you start focusing on it and make and every day becomes a step towards making that goal on the way you see a lot of scenery you should take in all the scenery because that scenery is presented to you like you take a ticket from pune to bombay then you don't just stare at the board in front of you and say oh i am going to bombay to pune i'll open my eyes only in pune or if you are coming to bombay i'll open my eyes only in bombay till then i am in the train and i am on my way you look out of the window you will see plains you will see meadows you will see trees you will see buildings then you will see hills then you see rain you will see rivers you will see waterfalls take all that all that you get in because that's the journey and in that journey you will in your mind you will say oh these waterfalls look so beautiful i wish i was trekking in these mountains so a new passion is built in your mind because you actually saw it and then the next time you will say i am not going to bombay it's a very crowded city i think i'll go to khandala and i'll do some trekking so you go to do trekking so you got a new new passion and you go and do that and like that if you on the journey to your main goal a lot of new passions will be aroused which become complementary to your main goal and so you're not tunnel vision you're very broad vision but your purposeful work is always tunnel your purposeful work is what you are doing at that moment so if you are trekking you are only trekking that time you are not thinking tomorrow i have to take a train to somewhere else so if you do that whatever you are doing at that moment with tunnel vision in the broad part you will be broad vision because you know that in when you focus on one letter you can't read everything around it when you are reading also you are focusing on word by word then only you can read so without moving your eyes and without changing your focus you can't read the sentence like that is to read a book is your goal but you, to read each word will have to have focus like that you do then you are not tunnel vision yes sir you have another question atar yeah uh, wait See? Say your mind. Don't have to worry. You are not right, not wrong. No, I forgot. I actually forgot. 
what do you want to say so we'll move on to the next question okay we have a question from nandini yes nandini uh, good afternoon sir um so how do you think we can manage work like studies and everything else considering how overwhelming everything is and still keep our mental health intact because you know just thinking positive that a lot of people say it's no not sweetheart really you fun. don't think positive you have to act positive you have to think positive means you should you should focus on you see if you are you are in a window you can look down and focus on the mud or you can look up and focus on the sky depends on where you are looking so that thinking positive and thinking negative are where you are actually focusing but then by sitting in the house you don't reach the sky you have to actually work to reach there so thinking positive is an attitude which you build up that you always expect see tomorrow is not happened nobody knows what is tomorrow and if you expect tomorrow to be nice you will be happy till tomorrow and then tomorrow whether it is nice or wrong nice or bad will happen we deal with it but today if you expect it to be bad and cry from now till tomorrow you have wasted a perfectly good 24 hours in the anticipation and then to your surprise tomorrow is not as bad in fact it was good so you say i wasted 24 hours in fretting for something that never happened and the joy of being good will be only for one minute because you have already formed a habit of worrying about tomorrow again so again tomorrow is but today was nice but tomorrow is going to be miserable so that becomes a negative thinker a positive thinker is once we will deal with tomorrow when it comes this moment is nice and it's up to me to make it nice or bad so you are the one who generates you decide what has to be done and sometimes you get challenges thrown at you use your use your mind so never ever in your life say overwhelmed overwhelmed means the situation got the better of you you are smart enough to get the better of any situation however challenging it may be if you if you meet up to the challenge and give it your best you can't get overwhelmed you may not win as much as you should but you definitely don't lose and therefore don't ever feel that you are small because you may be small in age but you can always gather more and more experience more and more wisdom more and more knowledge and move on and become more and more experienced because there's a giant inside you waiting to be born you have to sometimes labor to get it out that was nandini's question right yes sir so nandini you're not on the video i don't get to see your face um so actually my connection is really poor no problem don't worry sorry yeah but uh, you are not going to think ever the situation around you is going to overwhelm you challenges will be thrown challenges are thrown to people who are capable if you are not capable challenges avoid you so if you are capable you get challenges you have to work hard and then you will should see that that challenge gives you an impetus to go higher so yeah um so but like there are so many people with mental health problems so even they try to come out of it by acting positive or thinking positive but then it doesn't really work every time no mental health is a very complex term you there are certain things which situations make that's where all the things like love and hate Absolutely. and all that comes in now if you love someone it's a it's a feeling that's what god gave us that ability to feel now if that some loved person is sick then you feel grief and if you are serving the person and not getting better then you get grief and if you don't serve that person then you get guilt now all these things are not uh, these are the features of human nature and human nature is not bereft of feelings so if you have feelings it's a good thing it means you're alive so you will feel dejected sometimes you will feel happy sometimes that's the humanness in you but don't cling to negative emotions every time you feel negative or every time you fail you have to say okay i'll we i'll grieve for a week so i'll tell you something when i did my md the first time i couldn't put in the best effort because i had other things on my head 
and the first attempt i failed when i failed i came home in my life i never failed and i sat at home and i said yeah, my whole life has crumbled in front of my eyes 3 years of hard labor and the net result is i'm still an mbbs and i not got my md so for a week i just roamed around like a zombie didn't talk to anyone didn't eat properly didn't do anything after a week i decided that if i sit like this my life is being wasted i gave myself a week to grieve then i had a cold shower and i decided that from today i'm going to give this exam another assault and this time my assault will be so ruthless that the exam has to be vanquished and i sat down and i studied for 18 hours a day for 6 months and i studied with only one focus that i have to conquer the exam and then the second time when i wrote the exam it was so easy i went through sailing but because it was a second attempt i didn't get a gold medal but the first attempt itself was a half hearted attempt then i realized when i said the second attempt that this attempt was so much more knowledgeable and so much more better prepared than the first one so it made me a more uh, mature person and today i feel had i passed the first time i wouldn't have made such a good doctor because i never read my books that thoroughly i would have got the degree and remained that same mediocre person second time i read the book in detail and so it made me more knowledgeable so every event that happens at that moment may be bad may be grievous may be bad sad whatever you want to call it but in the long run it's a it contributes to the greater picture you know there's a saying that god is a weaver and you are the tapestry and you are sitting behind the tapestry sometimes he is filling the black threads and you say oh curse i am only getting black 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 all the time but you are not seeing that sometimes he fills the gold threads that when you come in the front and see the tapestry you realize that you need the black to appreciate the gold and in the end the tapestry look very beautiful black on gold so you are a tapestry in the making so you don't get discouraged never feel overwhelmed just say okay make better attempt and conquer the same thing okay thank you sir thanks nandini all the best so yuvraj has a question he's unable to raise his hand on zoom so he's uh, no problem say yuvraj yuvraj, yuvraj, yuvraj you can ask your question yuvraj chauhan yeah go ahead sir um, i basically had a question like how do i control my anger like who you angry against what who are you angry against uh someone who does not you know do do like some work. someone who does something which i do not like and what are the things that you don't like like making me get up in the morning i don't know sir but i am not able to control my anger no you have you know you are a young man and your hormones are racing inside now your hormones are like wild horses and you yes. know there is a saying that you must be 15 16 years old how old are you 15 15 the 15 is a peak of adolescence you are able to hear me yes sir yeah 15 is a peak of adolescence and there's one book which defined adolescence it says that you are painfully astride the barbed wire fence that separates boyhood from manhood and don't know which side to step so sometimes you think i'm a boy and you say i'll go on the boy side sometimes you think i'm a man and want to go on the man side but you go to neither side you're sitting on the barbed wire fence now you imagine a person actually sitting on a barbed wire fence and where it pokes and how hard it pokes and that person not going to be a easy tempered person so if you want to harness your anger which is your power it is the power of water if you if you want to harness that you know you know a dam no you dam up a water you dam up water it is all accumulated on one side if you don't open that dam then when the water pressure exceeds certain power it will break the dam and after that there will be death and destruction correct but if you open yeah. the dam periodically and let it come out that water will generate electricity and that is a good good harnessing of that power so like that you have your hormones playing havoc in your head you need to sit down and realize that 
you are a man in the making you are not already a man and now you are a boy in the end 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 of boyhood enjoy the pleasures of both and once you enjoy the pleasures of both and you realize that you are more calmer in your head and not react because the conflict is inside your head and when you are conflicted you don't have much energy to bear anybody else's inter- interruption like if you are confused whether you are a boy or a donkey suppose you are confused am i a human being or a donkey and someone on the road get angry with you and calls you a donkey you will explode and you will go after the guy and beat the hell out of him why yeah. because he because he confirmed your worst doubts you were always conflicted in your mind that am i a human or a donkey am i a human or a donkey and i think i am a donkey but i don't want to be donkey i want to be human and that guy called you a donkey and says that guy confirmed my worst doubts and i don't like it so beat the hell out of him or you will call him back a donkey because by bringing him down you elevate yourself so first thing make sure that you are a very fine human being you are not a donkey so after that if someone calls you a donkey no then you say poor chap doesn't know what a donkey looks like because he doesn't know if he calling you a donkey he doesn't know what a donkey looks like so just feel sympathy for that person and ignore him then you don't waste your energy and your mental mental energy in uh, being angry on him so anger expressed is destructive and not expressed is destructive yourself because it's like saying i'll throw this hot coal on your face to burn you because i'm angry but don't throw it when you say it, when you don't express it you don't throw it so when you don't throw it you're holding it in your hand only and when you're holding it in your hand it's burning your hand it's not doing anything to the okay. other guy so anger is self destructive so at that moment you say whatever anyone says whatever anyone does it doesn't matter finished when you say it doesn't matter you stop reacting you react only because it matters so if you take a deep breath at that moment and say it doesn't matter move on i know what i'm doing and just keep doing but first of all know what you're doing so like can i say something like uh, i yeah, read sure. i read sad like i heard sad guru he said like i don't give privilege to anyone that he to can control make... my senses ah uh, and yeah. then buddha once said that i anger is like gifts if you yeah. buy gifts i uh, if you buy gifts and you uh, give it to someone else then the gift gift is of someone else but he doesn't re- if he refuses then whose is the gift yeah. it's uh, theirs only yes, like, anger is gift that man will uh, like the person who is trying to anger you will bring the gift to you but if yeah. you refuse that gift the anger will, have to, uh, uh, will uh, affect uh, them only yeah when you get angry the person trying to make you angry is victorious because he has made you do what he wants you to do which means what what you just said earlier that uh, uh, what you have uh, what uh, i mean uh, uh, what you said the what was the first thing you said that um, that i don't give anyone the privilege to make you me. don't yeah is it don't don't give the reins of your happiness into somebody else's hands mm-hmm. so he can't make you decide whether you should be happy or not to be happy is your personal response so you should not give that privilege to anyone else and the second thing is exactly what buddha said that you don't give you give gifts of what you give you know there's a saying the you know germany was divided into east and west germany and that berlin. time berlin berlin had a wall yeah. and there was yes, east sir. berlin and north yes. berlin uh, east berlin and west berlin now west berlin was the progressive country and east berlin was the suppressed country so east berlin was always angry with west berlin so he said if we are angry with them we will make their life miserable so what they did over the wall they used to throw garbage the entire city is garbage they used to throw over the wall into west germ west berlin so west berlin in turn would respond by throwing fruits and vegetables across the wall and these guys said these guy we are throwing garbage and they are giving us fruits and vegetables why is it like that so the one day when the wall broke this east and west guys started talking he says you know all these years we threw garbage on your side you threw fruits and vegetables you know what the west berliner said he said you can only give what you have so you have garbage so you gave me garbage i had fruits and vegetables so i gave you fruits and vegetables so you decide what your culture is and give according to what your culture is the other will give according to his culture 
you are not responsible for his culture so control your culture decide first what is your culture yes yuvraj you got your answer yes sir who's next we'll take the last three questions sir is it okay for me any amount is okay for you you are the time keeper <laughs> so we'll take a question from asmita yeah um good afternoon sir good afternoon asmita my question stands uh, as uh, should we do what we love or should we love what we do because in other con- there are a lot of things when you need to keep in mind it's just not people say that you should go after your passion but then there are many other things to keep in mind because the uh, suppose for example um, we are living in such a generation where we've been given everything and our aspirations for a good life is extremely high than what was for our previous generations so uh, one minute asmita what is a good life um so, so is it, it a material comforts I think it goes from it varies from person to person. No, you, you, you would, are the person. Ah, uh, okay. Asmita, you are so, the person. I think my uh, a good life for me would be where I would be satisfied with the work I would be doing, and I would have experiences that I would want. So, is it is it for you a good life that your father has a Honda City and you want a Mercedes? Until you get a Mercedes, you are not going to have a good life. Is it like that? So uh, it's just not about cars. For example, no, uh, a, I I'm really just... want to travel the entire world. Very okay? good. Okay, and for yeah. that, I need a I need a pretty large some amount of money. Depends and how you if... want to travel. You want to backpack uh, across the world, which I would do if I was your age. It doesn't cost money. It costs time, and it and that time is well invested. And if you have friends, you can you can always live with friends. You need one friend in Europe. I had that. i go to one friend i wrote to him i want to stay with you i stayed with him and after that that friend give me reference in another country i stay with that friend that friend give me reference in another country and like that i stayed in people's homes learned their culture and finally traveled the country countries so it also depends how you plan your passion is to travel within your means you travel how your passion takes you you can travel first class by air and live in five star hotels for which you will have to have a fortune and at the end of it you will not know that country because five star hotels are exact xerox copies all over the world you can't get comfort to a beyond a certain level whether your your bed is as soft as feathers or it's an air bed if you are tired you will sleep even on the pavement if you are not tired you can be sleepless even on the softest bed so the important thing is travel travel you must do if you like travel like that 90% of the times you should do the things that you love but if forced to do something which you don't then love the things that you do because when you love the thing you will do it well and if it has been thrust upon you rest assured that 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 unwanted thing has a role to play in the bigger picture which you may not have seen but someone has seen and therefore do it but do it best so so should we depend saying that our entire life is planned before us and something no. good is always supposed it is to planned. come it is planned but it doesn't have to happen automatically you have to slog for it this so it you... is planned it is not going to happen automatically so suppose you are going to get uh, x suppose you say in your destiny is Fifty thousand rupees before the end of this year. You say, "Wow, my destiny is going to give me fifty thousand rupees end of this year. I'll sleep. I don't need to work. Then nothing is going to come because it's a promise. But that note is not yet given to you. But if you follow your destiny and do everything which you have to do and do it well and uh, give every moment your best, at the end of the year, in the most unexpected way, you'll get it. That's your destiny. So I destiny is one thing." but your hard work has to be supplemented so there is no escape to that All and right, if the obstacles you. is okay the obstacles only make you sharper you better better run up all right thank you all the best darling 
So we we'll take a question from Gayatri. Yes. So, uh, yeah, so I just wanted to ask, like, people have different definitions of success for, like, what it means to them. I yeah, just yeah. wanted to ask what it means to you. To me, I gave a lot of thought to it. And there is a, uh, I looked also along the, along the way to what is success. Because one thing I know for sure, that to my mind, to earn more money is not success. Because some money comes and money goes is money is never featured in my idea of success but my idea was of success for example today my idea of success is that i have uh, uh, let's say 120 130 or 150 students may have benefited from my time and then I say i have succeeded for the day for the hour or for the next and then after that whatever next demands come on my way if i can do it successfully or do it to make more people happy. I'll be very happy to do it. So at the end of the day, I'm thinking that if one life breathe easy because you lived is to have succeeded. Or if you have left this place with a healthy child or a productive child, or if you have a, a left this place with a thing of beauty like a garden or something created by you, then you have succeeded. So Success to me is not simply material success. That is also by the byproduct. But real success is when you feel internally full, fulfilled. When you feel I set out to do something and I did it. That fulfillment is success. And success, peak success is made from small successes. So every moment should be a success. And if you can do that, then you got a successful life. So if you set out to do 10 sums in your mathematics. At the end of one hour, you finish the 10 sums all correct. You have succeeded. Then after that, you may become a PhD in maths later. But that 10 sums getting correct is contributing to the PhD. But if you don't and give it up and crib and crow and say that I hate this maths, you're neither a success, you're a loser because you didn't do what was supposed to be done and you didn't do anything else also. So you have to give everything that is thrust upon you your best. So it goes back to the previous answer that aim to do everything that you love, but also aim or aim to love everything that comes your way. So then you'll be successful. I I refer you to Google. Go on Google and type definition of success by Emerson and read his thing. It is fantastic. Every word is fantastic. Okay, sir. Definitely. And emulate it. That's what I'm trying to do. Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Who's next, Uganda? So we'll take a question from Mania. Mania? Hi, sir. Uh, sir, it's not something you uh, talked about in this session, but it's something I often think to myself or ask myself. Yeah. Um, we take birth, our parents raise us, do their best, and then next we do our best, work hard, study, get a job, yep. and everything. But like we already know the end. Everyone, what is the end? Everyone is going to die someday. No, death is death is only to the physical body. If your deeds are alive, you know, today I give you an extreme example. I say Mahatma Gandhi is still alive. Every banknote has his picture. Every street has a Every, every city has a name to his street. And today his name is still being used. He has gone and metal melded with dust and God knows how many times he was born and reborn and died. We don't know. But his name is still alive. His memory is still alive. His soul is still alive. All our souls are alive. But our souls have not achieved their purpose. Once they achieve their purpose, you have etched yourself a position of immortality. So... If you think that destruction of the body is the end of everything, then this whole journey is amount to a dash. Have you ever been to a graveyard? Or yeah. ever seen it on a picture? Yeah. yeah. In that they write the name of the person on whom the tombstone, there's a name on it and underneath there's two dates. Or if not, don't go to graveyard, open the death column in the newspaper. And they will write over there, so-and-so, Mr. or Mrs. so-and-so. Underneath they'll say, 19, 12, 2, 19 uh, to 2020 right mm -hmm. 1912 was born 2020 died 
and in between there is a dash and what is his whole life amounted to one dash his whole life was that one dash between the time he was born to the between the time he is dead now it's up to you whether you make that dash your story or you leave that dash as a dash so a real success person never dies because he lives in the hearts of many afterwards because you did something good for them their memory continues and moves on and on and on and you get etched into immortality but if you lead a life which destroyed people or killed or made some misery to everyone or worse still didn't do anything to anyone and just existed then that life is a wasted life so that choice is ours destiny provides a platform hard work is our choice that choice was given to human beings animals don't choose they they do whatever is supposed to be done we got a choice they said let me see my best creation i'll give him independence and see how they play with themselves now by the time you discover everything life is already over so it better you discover from those who already discovered take that advice move forward you'll reach higher than them we don't take that advice as i'll experience dad smokes and he stopped smoking because he got a bad cough and someone told him that that little scar can turn cancer and then when you turn 15 16 one day he says he sees a cigarette in your bag and he says beta you should not be smoking so why are you not smoke why are you smoking and she you said you smoke so i am smoking and he said if only i can tell you how much i suffered when i smoked then you will learn you will want to learn by yourself you will smoke till you get that and then when you get that you suffer and this i wish i did but if you heed his warning you save yourself and when you save yourself at this age you are good for many other things and those other things will take you further than he went and that's the whole essence of learning from others experience foolish people learn from their own and intelligent people wise people learn from others take the benefit read books take successful people's books and read see what they did to become successful and do that and that's how you grow that's why it's important to read yes. read see look like ganpati <laughs> good did you get your answer yes sir i did thank you so should we take the last question yeah i don't mind whoever if there are questions i'll take them all right so we have a question from daksh yeah they all must be hungry now i see some have already gone for lunch sure. daksh yes sir i have a question yeah as you said it is important for us to make goals uh, short term or long term whichever may be made be and adhere to it so like yeah. how do we get the motivation every day to get up and work for it no it may not be a minute by minute thing in between you will stray away from the path but net result should be that you you stick to it or if you can't stick to it then it's not your passion that means your goal is wrong then your goal should be according to your passion and your passion is something that drags you to do it like if you get passionate about reading and if you reach the part in the book where you just don't want to leave it but it's time to go to school you will go to school and when the bell to go home rings you will actually come running back home to finish that book because that's your passion so you got to have a passion that makes you drive to work every day to realize it otherwise it's not your passion it is somebody else's passion and you can always reserve the right to change your passions as and when you get more inputs but to get more inputs is to read more listen more think more talk more see more and that's how you get more inputs and that will shape and and nurture your passion to its fine fine detail and that's why it's important you have a passion it may change tomorrow your passion may be different that's your birthright but not to have passion is a very is a dead dead person Suganda, any more questions, or everyone's hungry? <laughs> so there are three more. Um, yeah. See, I don't mind taking them, but it's already crossed one, and I think I don't know if you are time barred. I am not. 
I'm, so we'll just uh, take these last three. No more questions. Yeah. Okay. Yashraj, Soham and Manas. Yes. Yashraj, your question, please. Yes, sir. So as you said before that we should work hard, we should uh, do our best. But in this my is, case is... This is Yashraj talking? Yashraj, yes. Yeah, sir. okay. So, but in my case, what happens is I am ready to work hard. I am ready to give my best. But I am confused that where should I give my best? So how where your passion takes you. Give? You have to give your best where your passion takes you. And your passion is there in front of you you have to it's like what you enjoy doing most now sometimes what happens like i wanted to do medicine in school but medicine is not a subject in school biology is a subject in biology i used to get middle marks you know i'll tell you stories one day when we meet about about my my massive disasters in biology but i had to go through biology to get into medicine so i didn't leave biology because i hated it i didn't hate it but i wasn't good at it i finally did biology got the marks i needed and reached medicine and that's what i, I wanted to do so on the way to doing what you want to do there may be many pitfalls there may be many things that you don't like but you have to ask yourself is it necessary to reach my ultimate goal and if it is then give it your best again go back to that old question most of the time do what you love but sometimes you have to love what you do in order to do what you love so adjust yourself at that time put yourself through the mold and learn it difficult things must be conquered and made easy this computer your teachers will tell you i have never been on a zoom meeting and after they coached me on the tele on the telephone my son coached me just to get on to this meeting and yesterday i did a meeting i'm better at it today and i dare say i have lost the fear of this zoom meeting now so it's a thing that you have to learn even if you don't like it because it helps you to reach where you want to reach and where i want to reach is to be with you guys so that's how you have to do everything what is presented to you every day because it's part of the big picture yes sir okay sir thank you sir All the best, yes, Raj. Thank you, sir. Soham, you can go next. Sir. Yes, Soham. Where are we? Sir, I have a question yeah. which is related to my life. So actually, yeah. uh, like it has been years that I have been like talking good to people, uh, mm-hmm. behaving good to people. But at the end of the day, I always regret that because, Why? like, I don't know. Like, it seems like the people i talk to are no, wrong like no the problem they... is that you expect them to be good to you yeah that is a problem i found it problem... one thing you must have heard the story i told about the berlin wall you yes. you be good to people is your culture you can only be responsible for your culture what others are good to are, are to you is their culture and is their short sightedness so you don't doesn't mean if they are not good to you you don't have to be good remember one thing you are the man who generates the sound and they are sounding boards who send the echo sooner or later your echo will come back you don't echo what other people are sending because you are generating your own sound so if you go to the hills and scream and abuse the echo will be an abuse only you can't get back god's name but if you scream god's name you'll get echo back god's name so what sound you send forth that sound will come back therefore if you want people to be good to you you continue to be good and if they are not good it's their problem not yours because your culture is to be good so never regret that you are good because in the long sir, run your account books are written by someone else sir but actually like when i behave good with people i regret at the end and when i behave what my mind says it might be good or bad i don't regret it like yeah. it seems so, better than being good always so, so your mind tells you to be bad sometimes yeah many times because actually good and bad is your decision no you your yeah. your uh, uh, you put act acts as good and bad uh, all acts are acts they are not good or bad we decide they are good and bad so if yeah, you what... have if you do an act you know there is a saying if you read in polonius's advice to leaders in hamlet and it says over there 
never he tells his father polonius is the father and leotus is the son he tells his son never enter into a fight okay he is telling him to be good never enter into a fight but having entered make sure that you beat the hell out of the other guy this is not shakespeare's language this is my language shakespeare's language is having entered make sure the other know who you are so don't fight but if you have to fight then make sure the other guy knows who you are which means controlled energy controlled strength it doesn't mean that you should lie down and say come beat me it's not like that don't enter into a fight but if having entered make sure the other guy knows what you're doing so he never mess with you so being good is not a sign of weakness it's a sign of strength because a man who can be good in the face of adversity is a strong guy so if you have strength don't waste it a bad guy will respond to adversity with anger and therefore he'll be bad so that's not what you are sir so should so, i do what is good or should i do what my mind says you do what your mind says and your mind will always make you do good only okay thank you sir all the best sir as much as we would love to continue the session <laughs> no maybe we can now finish we'll take the uh, manas has been waiting for long with that the last question for today manas you can uh, go yes, sir sure. last question uh, yes. yes sir okay so sir actually i wanted to ask that uh, it happens many time in life that uh, we do not expect something but that happens Uh, so it might have happened with you also so like how do you tackle it when something unexpected happens in life unexpected happens always unexpected happens we can never predict what is going to happen but whatever happens you have to deal with it you may have plans for yourself but god has different plans sometimes and therefore it just happens my expectation for thursday was on on wednesday it rained heavily so i said today is my day of relaxation and although i do tele consultations with telephone i i said i i did my work by morning i was enjoying the rain outside i asked my wife to make another cup of tea i said tea on a hot hot cup of tea with so much rain is nice and while i was having my tea suddenly i hear huge crash downstairs and i look out of the window and i see our old 50 year old gulmohar tree has fallen and crushed two cars and is lying across our compound i am the secretary of the building and therefore i have to spring into action at that moment so all my plans of watching netflix and enjoying life with nice rain outside hot tea in my hand all went down the drain i went downstairs and i start supervising the clearing up and start making telephone calls calling people and so on and so forth now this is how life behaves it you have some plans life has other plans you have to learn to meet each challenge with the same gusto as if you only invited it you give it your best and then at the end of it you're only more experienced person so unexpected things happen and as you grow they'll happen more and more don't expect only you plan and do whatever you can and whatever god's have plans are there they may sometimes cooperate sometimes they won't so there there's a saying that uh, you know they say life is not a even play field we say oh that guy was cheating there there were stones on the my side of the compound life is not an even play field you have to still win therefore learn to play on uneven play field and who said life is fair that's the second one now everything is not fair in love and war in in life itself so you will find someone doesn't work and gets everything and someone works hard and gets nothing in the long run everything evens out so don't compare yourself with others life is not fair in the short run in the long run it is and then if we don't listen to both this no there's a third sentence and that third sentence is it's your life do what you like with it this is when a parent teaches the child he said who said life is fair life is not an even play field then he still doesn't listen then he says it's your life do what you like So Manas, it's your life. Do what you like. You want to fight. You want to weep. You want to cry. It's your life. Do it. But you want to live. You want to be happy. You want to become experienced. Do it. Thank all you, the sir. best. Thanks a lot, all of you, for listening. 
i had a very nice time and i hope you all also learned maybe at some point in time maybe december we'll all meet again in real time till then i think this is a bad not a bad substitute absolutely thank you, thank you sir. sir thank you sir thank you thanks all of you thank you thank sugandha you so much. it was it's always a pleasure to listen to you and on a very positive note yes it's our life and we make the most of it yes to bring this session to an end uh, thank, thank you. you students thank you uh, audience thank you so for much for tuning in thank you so much sir thanks. it was a wonderful session thank you sugandha thank thanks you, to sir. all the people behind the scenes who done so much to let this happen